Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, or good day, wherever you are in the world. And welcome to the next episode of No Dice, No Glory. Sponsored by our jobs that actually pay us money, we're coming to you not at all live from an abandoned arms factory deep under a mountain in West Virginia. We are proud to proffer to you the finest in wargaming coverage. Without any further ado, let's get this show on the road. Thank you, Sean, for that spellbinding intro. You know, the sound of your voice just brings music to my ears. Hmm. Today, I am pleased to announce something. As you, our lovely listeners, may have noticed, we have an official name now. We're going to be called No Dice, No Glories Tabletop Tactics. So, what do you think about that, Ed? I thought it was a stroke of genius. I thought it was better than Tactics Terrorist, for sure. Uh, uh, I, I like the name, but uh, yeah, it was a good, uh, it's a good name. Well, good. I'm glad that you approve of the name. I'm glad that I approve of the name. And hopefully our listeners also approve of the name. Hopefully it makes it a little bit easier to figure out what you're about to listen to and organize your podcast life just a little bit better. Uh, so with that, today, Ed, we're going to talk about your event that just happened on October 20th, how mm-hmm. we did, how our list did, how we could do it better, uh, what we did bad, maybe. Uh, and we're going to bring to the front and forefront what's on everyone's mind. How on earth do I play with heavy tanks? And how do I win games with them? Uh, I know this is a question that I get asked at stores frequently. And with mid-war heavy tanks now beginning to come out and uh, seeing them at, at tournaments, you know they, they don't normally do very well. So we're going to talk about that for a little bit today, see if maybe we can help some people out. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good question. I'll make sure I'll be Googling it while we talk about our first section to figure it out. No, but in all seriousness, um, there are times it works, there are times it doesn't work, and uh you know, hopefully we can explain that to you guys so you can bring out the big toys that everybody, everybody loves to play with. So tell us, Ed, what did you run for your event on the 20th? And you know what? I should stop stop myself right there. Who won your event on the 20th? Well, it's, you know, I, I end up winning the event. Uh, and it, it always looks weird when, when you run the event and you win the event. Uh, but I will say that, you know, round one I played against best senior. Round three I played against... Best junior. For everyone, Those are two of the tough guys. For everyone to play, who is about to cry foul that Ed won his own event, uh, you should know two things. One, he did pass up prize support, so I have some lovely uh, new buildings because Ed didn't take the prize. And after saying he was going to grudge me forever in the final round, he decided not to grudge match me. So why did you decide not to grudge match me, Edge? Well, I, let's be honest. Uh, my my final list. For those who don't know, the first two rounds you played at forty five points, and at round three you could switch. You go up to seventy five points, but you could switch nations. And I chose to switch nations from German to Americans and play an M ten tank company. Uh, and, and after looking at your list and James Junior's list, they were very similar, with the exception of where he took more Crusaders. You essentially took a Honey Stewart formation. That's right. And I can't get I, away from the honeys. No, and I, I just did not feel like I had enough guns to effectively deal with that in the mission that we played was Annihilation. Uh, so instead of grudging you, I decided that I would take the person on who at the time had the most points in a tournament, uh, was in first place, and I said, I'll just, you know, we'll go with that. But even to get that, that matchup, me and you were tied. Yep. So I had Mitch do a blind pick of who was going to take on first place, and it was me, so... You know, played uh, played James Jr. and uh, and got the win. Well, all's fair in love and war, and I'll get you next time. Actually, yep, I think we're three for zero right now, so I feel pretty confident in saying that. Ah, uh, you should. I have yet to beat you. Uh, I don't think I've we, we've tied once, and that's probably the closest I've gotten to victory. Besides the uh, IS two meltdown in the city. <laughs> Always a fun game. So tell us about your list. We'll, we'll just go for the final, final game. How did your list do against James Best Crusaders? What what did you do wrong? What could you have done better? You know, I'm not really sure what I could have done better. I'm not really sure. I, I probably did something wrong with my stewards. I'll get to that. But the this table we played on was really bare for terrain. And it was the table was set up that way because we wanted these these tank duels, um, and I, with being outgunned, I had to hide my M10. So I wanted to use the M10s the same way I used the German Martyrs, which is to have them comp- 
completely unseen to the enemy. And if you can see one, it's going to be one at concealed. And what I did was I would blitz them out. I would use a full rate of fire to eliminate as many opposing tanks as I could and scoot them, shoot them back into cover. And then, again, eliminating shots back to me. And that worked for a while, but I was probably outnumbered three to one on tanks. And his tanks came in and eventually get, were able to get shots off my M10s, eliminate one of the platoons. Uh, the mistake I did make was I had a platoon of three Stuarts, and I just didn't... I had them sitting in the field just hiding out, and I just didn't use them well enough. They didn't get shots off when they needed to. Um, they essentially just sat and waited to be killed. Uh, but, you know, really in the, ended up winning the game. In the last round of shooting, I shot eight times with my M10s. Uh, I connected on almost every hit but two. And when it's his turn, he failed four last stand checks. And his formation broke, and then the game went to me. The game sh I should not have won that game, um, but I did, and it ended up winning the tournament with it. You know, sometimes you can't get away from the tactic of lucky dice. Yeah, and it, it, it certainly showed. Well, I will say after uh, our our games on, on Sunday, I had uh, my first matchup was against Soviet Armor. I was a little worried how my, my 45 point list was going to do Soviet Armor, but after playing it, I will, I'll be willing to say that Soviet Armor is not as scary, I think, as people think it might be. Agreed. Um, but very similar to you, I, I played in round three, uh, James Best Sr., and he brought an M10 company, uh, much like yours. I think instead of Stuart's, he brought uh, some Lees and a, one less M10 than you. Hmm. Um, which I think actually might be more sneaky. Because those Lees, having that extra AT9 shot instead of AT7 shots, you, may, you might lose a little bit of speed. But those Lees are nothing to laugh at. Uh, especially with right. stabilizers. That kind of threw me for a loop when I thought they were Grants coming out of the woods. <laughs> Turned out to be Lee's with six shots uh, into my my honey Stewart. Yeah. Um, but very similar. Uh, my my go to idea was I was going to rush him with my entire force on one flank, while my M10s kind of duked it out with his uh, small platoon M10s on the other side. Uh, Senior put his Lee's in the center, kind of holding his his center, and his HQ and his large M10 platoon on the left flank. So I put my Honey Stewart's and my Crusader formation on the left flank with my M10s, three M10s in, on the right flank. Kind of left the center wide open. Uh, my Crusader, uh, Crusaders, my Universal Care is kind of just going in and out where they needed to. Um, the idea here being finish off, you know, the M10s are going to kind of cancel each other out. And then my force basically versus four M10s and his two HQ Stewart's uh, and get to break his formation before he can bring those support Lees into the fight to really, really hurt me. Uh, it worked right. pretty well on turn one, uh, then turn two. Uh, it, as it was a re-roll tournament, Senior did the smart thing, and he re-rolled every miss that he made on round two. Uh, so I lost almost all of my Crusaders in one round of shooting, and a good chunk of my uh, Stuarts from Lees that sally forth from the uh, woods and I was like ah, three shots not so bad no scratch that six main gun shots and three 37s um, that left a platoon of Stuarts wishing that they had not come to battle but uh, yeah at the end of the day I was able to get off my flank shots really quickly uh, it was a very fast game for me and senior uh, we, we, were, we were in and out it was down and dirty and I ended up breaking his formation about a turn before he broke mine so um, very similar strategy to what we recommended a few weeks ago, where you come up the side and you just overwhelm the defender. Right. Uh, Senior and I were talking afterwards uh, during dinner, and he mentioned that you know it's very hard playing against me sometimes because I make you decide what you're going to shoot at, and you got to make the right choice because if you don't make the right choice, you lose the game. So yeah. um, I was up on his face for six six of his tanks versus almost thirty of mine. Um, and he, he had to make the choice, like, what do I shoot at? He had to be very particular in, in what he shot at to break platoons. He did a very good job. I just, I was fortunate enough that I made two or three really good last stand checks and then was able to envelop him, uh, and then get those side shots into the, into the, uh, M10s. Right. So. Yeah, and I, I want to hit on something you, you mentioned too. You were talking about, uh, the Soviet armor and the, uh, perceived fear of playing against Soviet armor. 
Uh, th- the second round was my first chance to play against Soviet armor uh, when it went to uh, Glenn Goddard's T-34 company. And my really only AT assets at the 45-point level that were playing the German armor cars were four Martyrs and three Pack 38s And, I, you know, I'd, I'd parked the Pack 38s on one objective and I had an infantry platoon and buildings surrounding another objective. So that to take the objectives, they were going to have to be assaulted off or, or shot off, which is going to be a, a difficult task. I was really surprised yeah. at the Pack 38s how well they did against the T-34s. Did they kill any T-34s? No. But when they fire off six shots at T-34s and you need twos to hit, it's You're that's a lot of ships. chances. <laughs> that's a lot of chances to, to get some penetrations. Um, the Martyrs ended up winning me the game. They, they killed the platoon of four T-34s, and then they killed the HQ uh, of a single T-34. They, they won me the game, but... I was shocked that at round two I had, had decimated this force that, you know, in my head was so scary. I was really worried going and looking at 45 points and what the Russians can bring for 45 points. I was really worried that allied lists in general aren't going to be able to bring enough heavy AT to deal with the front armor six spam. And it, it pleasantly surprised me that three M10s were really enough for me to hit the money where I needed it. Um, right. Could I, would I, if I would have brought four M10s or M10s and 17 pounders, would that have been better? Absolutely would have been better. But uh, it it seems very balanced, and, and it's a pleasant surprise, honestly. I was really thinking that Soviet heavy armor was going to just change the way the game played, but that hit on twos makes such a huge difference because, the, yeah, I only have six shots of AT-12, but of those six shots... I'm probably going to hit four, maybe five of them. Um, so it, it was surprising. It was pleasant that the game is... I, I feel they're balanced. Um, I was really worried that they weren't going to be balanced. But actually seeing them uh, in competitive hands, I played uh, Chris Goebel, uh, who is a competent player in his own right. And after seeing how a competent player can use them, um, I, th- I feel the game is balanced, especially the Axis. I think Germans... They've got it made in the shade. Between the Diana, the Pack 40s the 88s, the uh, Lancia, I think there are a lot of AT options that the Axis can bring. I I feel our Axis players should not worry about Soviet armor. It's it's scary, yes, and it's something you got to worry about. you got to play skillfully, but uh, it's nothing that you can't not deal with. Yeah, and, and one thing I will say is, you know, we had, we had talked before... Uh, you know, what were some of the most fearsome lists that we could potentially see? And it was like four T-34s and ten Valentines. We haven't seen someone show up there with ten to twenty Valentines, Russian Valentines, and say, come and get me. Because that, that, to me, would still be a very hard feat. But I don't think everybody's gotten the, their Valentines and painted them up just quite yet to unleash that on us. I'd agree with you. I think I think if people loaded up more with Valentines and support, a larger platoon of Valentines... I think mm-hmm. that's going to make a difference, especially against a list kind of like mine, where you know most of my AT is AT seven. You know, if I've got to worry about side armor six tanks, uh, my game against Chris Goble, I ended up breaking his formation because I was able to get side shots on T thirty fours. Right. If there's not as many T thirty fours, you know, I'm not going to have as easy a time doing that because uh, it turns out side armor six, AT seven, the worst I can do to you is bail you, possibly double bail you. So, interesting overall. Uh, it was a well-run tournament. How much money did we raise, Ed? It was four hundred and ninety-two dollars for Taps, which is a program that uh, that helps families for those who have fallen. Uh, you know, and I, I say this all the time. Any time you can raise money for a charity by just simply playing the game that you love, that's that's a good thing. And we have another tournament that's going to be coming up. It's going to be run by someone who's played tur- in tournaments for seven years. We'll talk about it at the end, but you know, I, I just can't say how much you know. This is something we need to do more often, you know. And and, and maybe ditch the re rolls, not make it that every time. But uh, anytime you can raise money for a charity while playing a game is is spectacular. I agree. Well, I know our listeners are getting excited for the heavy tank discussion, or at least I hope they do. So I'm going to kick us off into our next segment here. 
and we're going to talk about heavy tanks now. Uh, mm -hmm. Heavy tanks, my personal opinion, is they are a waste of points. Um, I've been to too many tournaments where heavy tanks just they don't perform well. Uh, and my my first example, uh, I ran a uh, tetrarch list in late war. Um, I love the tetrarchs. Late war, they're a tank team. They have front armor one, side armor one. They can be upgraded. Two of them can get an AT9 gun with a 5 up firepower, that little John adapter. But most of them are AT7. And you'd think in late war that that's just not going to do very well, but those little fearless vet buggers are buggers. Well, I ran up against a tiger list, and I thought, how in God's name am I going to pick this one out of the bucket? I can't hurt a tiger. The best I can do is bail it. So he ran up with his two platoons, Sally forth with my uh, infantry, my paratroopers to deal with him, and I sent all my tetrarchs to his HQ uh, tiger he left on the, mm -hmm. his objective. And I was able to double bail him, and he failed his double bail, so I was able to win the game against uh, tigers versus tetrarchs. And I don't know that I could ever repeat that, but it was a fun game. But that really just... I don't think I'll run that list again. <laughs> it... <laughs> I wasn't going to say who I ran it against, but uh, since you mentioned it, Ed, uh, yes, it was a it was an interesting game. I think you did everything right. I don't think you were expecting those little Tetrarchs to uh, kill your formation commander, though. Nope. Um, but that really just sealed in my head that they're just overpriced. And for what you get, you're only getting two shots per turn from a tank. Granted, it's a little Death Star tank, but, you know, you start getting Shermans and Fireflies that are moving around you. Is two shots per turn enough to kill a squadron of uh, Shermans, a squadron of Comets? It's just not enough. So, in my mind, I think they're a little overpriced, especially for competitive play. But even for a friendly game, you've got to put such a huge investment into your heavy tank that it may not make its points back, and if it does, you, you've you spent so much time focusing on that unit that I've been able to skirt around the rest of your army. I, I would contend that there are certain heavy tanks that are too expensive, and that you could only run them in a certain situation, and then I would contend that there are some heavy tanks that are so cheap, it's like, you know, why, why aren't people running these? That's true, um, there are several lists that heavy tanks can't i think there's an is list out there is2s oh just just an is2 list it, it's been dominating for a while um but you know one of the, the things that also makes the is2 list work so well is the fact that they can take 10 t3485 flame tanks for it's like what is the cost of essentially five shermans which is ridiculous 300 points. It's, it's really good yeah um but you know it's a really a pick your poison type of list but besides that list you know, some other list where I think it works well, early war Russians and being able to take a single KV. You know, what's going to have the AT value to knock out a KV in early war? I mean, the the best option I have to take out a KV in early war has always been infantry. Infantry with some uh, anti-tank weapon that they bring with them. Because, I mean, there there are guns out there that 88 could take it out, but that 88 is not cheap. No, and I'm just going to take the KV and park it on an objective. And if you're taking a KV, it they're not, in my opinion, they're not overpriced in early war for the Russians. So you'll have plenty of other options to field around that KV. It is essentially, and, and to me in early war, the KV is something you either park on an objective with support and know that that objective is secure, or you essentially use your entire force to create a highway for your KV just to walk towards mm. the opponent's objective to take so I'll, i guess i'll ask you ed I, I know you play tigers and and you play with those lists a lot I, i've i've talked with you i know all about your tiger love um right. how so how do you make tigers work uh we'll start off in a friendly game i guess how do you make the tiger the king tiger a churchill you know how do you make those heavy tanks the super purging that that's even better than the tiger it's so expensive how mm -hmm. do you not make it a magnet for shots or if you do make it a magnet, how do you keep infantry for, from swarming you? All right, so there, there's a couple of things with that. And I have played tank lists where it was a strictly heavy tanks, like the, the Tiger list that you mentioned. I've also played lists where I'm playing infantry, and the Tiger is just kind of the support option. Hmm. And I have found taking the heavy tank as a support option in the infantry list the most successful uh, way to go. So you're uh, saying instead of 
bringing a PZ4 formation and skimping on my PZ4s to then bring a King Tiger or a Yag Tiger or something like that. Mix that Yag Tiger, that King Tiger in with an infantry formation. Yeah, and I would say that the the most successful list I've ran that was able to successfully do this was the uh, Panzer Brigade Westfallen at uh, Bridger and Magen, which get a lot of uh, MG or a rifle MG uh, fearless train SS guys that all have Panzer Faust, and you could put King Tigers, Yag Tigers, or just regular Tigers in support with them, hmm. and you could focus on that tiger, try and knock it out, and the infantry is going to do the work. And if you're focusing on the infantry, then the other stuff with the tiger are going to knock out stuff. I mean, it's not a list where the the, the tanks are going to want to assault the infantry, and you can get some really cheap, reluctant trained or reluctant veteran king tigers. You bring um, up a really this... good point with the the cheap tigers. You know, I think mm-hmm. when you're playing heavy armor, you're not so much relying on the uh, to hit armor. So if I'm hitting you on fours, you know, you, that's a armor value, I guess you could say in itself, but you're really relying on that front armor eight or front armor nine or higher, depending on the tank, you know, Churchill right. seven's a front armor 13. Um, you're really relying on your, your steel to save you from death. Not so much, not getting hit. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I guess a good way to do that would be if you have the chance to take the fearless vet King tiger, yeah, that's a really good King Tiger. But if you can take the Reluctant Train King Tiger, you know, you're saving a lot of points there. So you might could squeeze in that extra platoon of a PZ-4 platoon or, you know, two or three infantry platoons for that. Right. And, and we talk about, you know, your Honey Stewart list, for example. It's hard to beat because people don't bring enough guns that can, can stop it before it reaches the objective. You're not getting all those shots off. You could look at the same thing for heavy tanks as well. You could look at your uh, Conf Group Hummel, which you get your confident trained uh, Tigers out of uh, bridge by bridge. And out of desperate measures, there's a, like a training school for heavy tanks or a heavy tank replacement brigade, I believe it is. Mm-hmm. And you can load that up with Panthers and Tigers. And I think for the HQ, you can get a King Tiger. Those are pretty cheap. And at a certain point level, you could field enough of those where your opponent's probably not going to have enough shots yeah. to deal with all those Tigers, but you're not going to be defending an objective with it. In late war, I'd have to say, you know, the Panther really is just the best tank that the Germans can bring. Like, that front armor 10 is just ridiculous. The gun on that, overall, that's such a great tank. And that's what scares me. When I see people that bring Tigers or King Tigers, I kind of laugh in my head like, okay, I'm pretty sure I've got this game. But when I see... The Axis player that brings Panthers, that really makes me double think because you can bring enough Panthers that now my tanks aren't going to overrun you. My infantry aren't going to be able to assault you very easy, and you haven't overloaded on that heavy armor. So, you know, a, a good balance between medium and heavy armor, I think that's the way to go. Yeah. All right, Ed. Well, now that we've talked about our heavy tanks, I know you have an event that you mentioned earlier. Uh, we like we all like supporting uh, charities, but what what are we talking about over here this time? So we're going to start with the uh, the charity event first. Uh, many of you guys have either heard or know of Jim Best Senior, right? He has been playing in tournaments for seven years. He's, I mean, if there's any tournament within a four to six hour driving distance, you can pretty much be assured that Jim Best Senior is going to be there, right? Yeah, he's he he comes down to here to Norfolk. Uh, he's been up in Maryland. He goes everywhere. Hi, yep. senior. This is our nice. We're saying something nice about you. See, we do love you. Yeah, if every once in a while. So he is actually going to run his first tournament, and his first tournament is going to be with Battlefront's Toys for Top program. So essentially, the way this works is, if you buy a toy, and Battlefront has said it has to be at least fifteen dollars. I don't think any of us are going to count. Uh, you come to Fredericksburg. With that toy, and that is your entry fee into playing in the mid-war 125-point tournament. 125-point tournament? 125 points. Well, I guess that it's a good thing a we talked about heavy tanks, because we're uh, going to yeah. be seeing tigers. <laughs> I I would expect to see at least one tiger. Maybe uh, one? I'm, I'm thinking two. I might bring I'm two tigers. Churchill's, KV's... We should be a lot of 
everything being fielded there. Whew, this is but, gonna be a good. This is gonna be fun. I've I've never played a game this big in mid war. I I haven't either. I think that the largest I've played was one fifteen, and I I really thought at one fifteen there was way too much on the table. I think at one twenty five, you know, Jim made a good point. It's probably not going to be that you're going to see much so much more stuff on the table. You should be seeing more people bring in the more expensive stuff. And I hope that works out. We'll see. I I have definitely been eyeing some of the more expensive stuff. Well, I've also been eyeing about switching, changing gears, and changing uh, armies completely. You also have to think about when Cold Wars, that one fifteen point tournament you're talking about. What was the what was the heavy option then? It was Desert Rats and Africa Corps, so you could bring a tiger. That was about it. That was your heavy option. Now there, we, there's so Fighting much first more. Was there? Yeah. Was it was Fighting First out then? Yeah, because I play against uh, Pete Zerfi's armored rifles ah, with my yes, that's uh, right. Dak Panzers. All right, well, now we can see a whole formation of uh, Shermans. So. <laughs> or, or really a fully fleshed out uh, formation of Churchills. Ooh, that's true. You know, you can take, like, what is it, six platoons of Churchills in that formation? Yeah, because seven are, is, what, 77 points? Yep, they're 11 points apiece. So. so, you know, having a platoon of three is a lot more comfortable than Ooh, two. That'll be fun. So Toys yeah. for Tots, $15 toy bring it to fredericksburg uh to the game store there and and you'll get into this tournament for 125 points and uh but before uh december rolls around uh and toys for tots uh what's what's upcoming real soon we have the iron man competition which is essentially fallen team yankee flames of war november 9th november 10th uh the last i checked for flames of war we have 30 people signed up which is incredible Am I, it is really to me. It's it's mind blowing. There's 30 people coming out for this mid war tournament. Uh, that's not a national tournament. Uh, I've seen a lot of guys that I don't recognize. A lot of names I haven't uh, seen before. A lot of people who haven't played in a while coming out to this mid war tournament. Uh, it's huge. Uh, the yeah. team Yankee, I believe, was up to 23, 24, which is still a decent amount for you know a, a team Yankee tournament. It's going to be really exciting. I, I I really think it's going to be a blast. I think it's going to be a blast. You know why, Ed? Because I'm getting 20% off. Battlefront is going to give me a coupon for playing in two tournaments for 20% off the purchase there at his uh, at Fallen, which I don't know about you all, but Battlefront doesn't do that many good sales. This is a good sale. Yeah, I, th- I think I might finally get that box of Pumas I've always wanted. I, I've Ever since it came out, I've been staring at it. I'm staring at it, staring at it. I, I think now is probably going to be the time where I commit to buy it. But did you hear how much they were giving away for Best Painted? No, what's that? It's $200 for Best Painted. $200. Well, I'll tell you what, people. You're not going to get any competition from me because I believe in the good old spray paint and smudge form of painting. Yeah, I, I, my Team Yankee Force may have a chance. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I always like to go for the best painted, but by the time I get there, it's a mixed match of different things that just don't blend well together. We'll have to see uh, who's going to win that, who's going to get to the Fallen, and who's going to be the Iron Man. Uh, with yep. all those events coming up, we hope to see everyone at some of these events. Um, they they promise to be uh, exciting, and hopefully our talk about heavy tanks as will help people out at the Toys for Tots event. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but other than that, I think that's going to end it up for us today. Uh, as always, give us questions and we will give you answers, at least our opinions of those answers. So for myself, Austin Copti. And Ed Sales. We'll see you guys next time. See ya. Thanks so much for joining the show tonight. Remember to follow us on Twitter at No Dice, No Glory. And keep the conversation going on NoDiceNoGlory.com, now featuring our own message boards. Have a great night, everybody.